This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Gray versus Ortiz. Ms. Gray, it's my understanding from the documents that you filed with this court that you sustained a pretty serious hand injury while at Ms. Ortiz's funeral home. You're asking this court to award you $46,000 for past medical bills, $7,200 for lost wages, and $100,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $153,000. $200. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Ortiz, you believe this is not your fault because you didn't know anything about what caused her injuries. That's True? correct, Your Honor. All right, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Tell me, uh, what led you to be in a funeral home that day? Well, Your Honor, I'm a makeup artist. Uh, makeup has been my passion since I was a little girl. Even my baby dolls had uh, makeup on all the time. I've been doing it for over 10 years now. I do weddings, I do sweet 16s, I do special occasions, anything, I can do it. My friend was telling me about a uh, convention that was in town, and that is where I met Miss Ortiz. She is the director at the funeral home Ray of Light. But how do you get into making up dead bodies? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, honestly, people may find it morbid, but beauty is beauty to me. So I feel like the bodies deserve to go out the way that they live. You know, as I read your papers, the only other person I'd ever heard of being in this business is I, I was talking to Matt when I met his parents, and his mom did a little bit of this, so I thought one in 10,000 people would do this kind of work. Is well, that pretty unique? Well, I'm one in 10,000, because <laughs> I love it. And Miss Ortiz, how long have you run this funeral home? Your Honor, I've been at this particular funeral home for over 20 years. I inherited it from my husband who got it from his parents when they retired. Do you normally have a makeup artist come in to do work on uh, the loved ones of, of folks? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Um, I normally have a regular staff, but I was at the mortuary convention and had a small booth, and that's how I met Miss um, Gray. She seemed like a nice enough girl at the time, so I thought, well, you know, if I need any extra help, I'll call her in. Uh, at this particular weekend, we were exceptionally busy. We had three funerals going on at once, and I needed an extra person to help out. So, Ms. Gray, how did you get injured on this day? So, as I started working, uh, I noticed some threads on the jacket part of, you know, the body. And uh, as I was pulling them off, I saw another string in the, like, in the pant pocket. So, I opened up the second half of the casket, and then I pulled what I thought was a string, and, Your Honor, it was a rat. It was like, oh. it, and as soon as I did that, Your Honor, it attacked. Like, it lunged at me, and it sh stuck its, like, razor-sharp teeth. Your Honor, like, oh, God, just talking about it, I can feel it all over again. Like... A rat jumped out? Your Honor, it jumped out at me, and it bit me everywhere. It got my arms, Your Honor. Like, I was so frantic, and I didn't know what else was in there. I, I have but an admission. Rats turn me into a little boy, okay? <laughs> it turns me into a little girl, Your Honor. I yes, was terrified. So I slammed the um, bottom half, and then that's when I slammed it on my hand, Your Honor, and then I broke my two fingers. So, so Ms. Ortiz, a, a rat in a casket, that's, that's kind of weird, right? Yes, Your Honor, it is definitely weird. I was hoping you would say yes. <laughs> How did you know that something had happened? Well, Your Honor, I was out front with the families. I had well over 100 people in the funeral home. I had three funerals going on all at once. I'm talking with some of the relatives and families, and I hear a scream in the back. I excuse myself and go running to the back. She's absolutely going crazy. Something about a rat, and I'm looking around going, rat, where? I see absolutely nothing, Your you Honor. You didn't see any rat. I saw nothing, Your Honor. She's standing there absolutely going crazy. So I said, please, sweetheart, please, I don't know what's going on, but go home, get some rest, and let me call you in the morning, and let's work this out. Let's find out what's going on. Now, Ms. Gray, mm -hmm. I want you to come over to uh, this casket and tell me exactly how this happened. Yes, Your Honor. I opened up the top half. As I was sitting there and, you know, fixing them up, that's when I saw the threads, like, at the top part of the jacket. So I'm, you know, just pulling them off, make sure they're fine. Um, and I saw another thread on the pant pocket part. So I was like, oh, okay, well, let me get it. Um, and instead of, like, digging, you know, for what, I pulled, and then that's when the rat jumped on me and attacked. 
Your Honor, it bit at me. Like, it took chunks of my flesh with it. You're gonna send me back into therapy here, okay? <laughs> I don't know what else is in here, so that's when I'm, you know, just freaking out. And then, so I just grabbed the top and then slammed it down and then landed on my hand. So that's how your hand was hurt? Yes, Your Honor. And you're screaming and flailing? And flailing about. And, Miss Ortiz, that's what you heard that drew you back to uh, see what was going on? Yes, Your Honor. So, Miss Gray, you may return to the podium. Thank you. Miss Ortiz, this happened at your funeral home. Th this isn't your fault? No, Your Honor. May I please? Yes, ma'am. Please the court. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, I would like you to look at this casket. Okay. Why was she in the bottom half of the casket? She had no business being in the bottom half. So she could have there done her no job on the top half. There was no way she could have seen that. Why did she open Your the bottom Honor. half? Why did she open Your the bottom Honor. half, Your Honor? I mean, that's a good point. You, you're not putting makeup below the belt, right? I understand, but I'm a perfectionist. Okay. At the end Your of Honor, the day, it's exceptionally curious name, that she's in the bottom half. My name goes on that work, regardless of who sees it or who doesn't see it. Your name is not on anything. Mine is. That's still my name. That's in, my brand. In terms of what they're gonna see, though, they're gonna see the top half, though, right? But I like for things to look nice. I like to go a step above and beyond just to make sure that these people get the respect they deserve. Just because they're dead doesn't mean that they don't deserve that. So, Ms. Ortiz, had she not gone below the belt, this never would have happened, would it? It never would have happened, Your Honor. You can go back to the podium, man. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Your Honor. So, Ms. Gray, you have $46,000 in medical bills. Please explain that for me. I broke two of my fingers on my dominant hand. This is my working hand. I can't work right now. Look at that. Like, that looks disgusting. That's you. I wouldn't you. want anybody to touch me looking like that. It looks like the rat was actually hanging on he your skin. He clung to life, Your Honor. Okay? Uh, Woo! It, it makes me itch. It should. The bites still haven't healed. Like, they're still sore. Um, they itch all the time. And you are left-handed. I am. And that's why you couldn't work and you're asking this court to give you $7,200 for lost wages. Yes, Your Honor. I can't even get dressed. I can't even cook. Oh, please, Your I've Honor. I've consulted an expert, Dr. Samantha Brown Parks, who's going to come in and explain your injuries. Sheriff, would you get Dr. Samantha Brown Parks yes, for us? Huh? All right. Okay. Oh. All right. Okay. Come on back to your podium. <sighs> oh, God. Look, it's looking at me. Ah. <laughs> so, Judge, this is a common black rat, um, also known as a roof rat or a house rat, that you would find out in the community. A lot of humans have an innate fear of rats, probably because of the destruction that they've created on our civilization over time. But they're not that friendly looking, Doc. More importantly, they like to chew. They're omnivores, so they eat everything. So they chew on wood, they chew on paper, they chew on electrical wires. Chew on skin, Your Honor. But they also chew on corpses. <laughs> Doctor, what's your understanding of the plaintiff's injuries? So from reviewing her case, it looks like the physician who treated her did everything right. How do you treat that kind of thing? We clean out the wound and treat it just like any other wound and dress it. But we also have to treat with prophylactic antibiotics. So rats are known to carry a lot of really kind of bad diseases. Does the plaintiff face any long-term consequences? It looks like her wounds will probably heal. She may have some scarring and need scar revision. But more importantly, given her history of a fear of rodents, I suspect that she'll have long-term longitudinal psychiatric or psychological counseling. Doc, what about the toxicology report as it pertains to disease? They tested her blood for a series of organisms that could infect her that she'd be at risk for. Um, so salmonella, which can be carried in the urine and feces and then on the rat's fur. And you um, get that when they bite you? Or when they scratch you and climb on you. Then your Yersinia pestis, um, which is the bubonic plague, um, which is from the actual bite. HIV, mostly because it was in a casket with a dead body. This could have been really bad. Absolutely. Well, thank you, doctor. You are released. Ooh. <sighs> I'm sweating from that rat, y'all. I, I understand. I mean, that, that's, Miss <laughs> Ortiz, have you ever seen rats in your 
funeral parlor before? No, Your Honor, never. Not ever. even once? Not even your once, Honor, Your Honor. The, the funeral home is disgusting. It is completely and utterly filthy. It's next to a garbage filled alley. You have submitted this photo. How can Miss Ortiz be responsible for garbage in an alley? You cannot hold her responsible, and frankly, more importantly, not you, but the law does not hold her responsible for other people's trash in the alley. I have cleaning people that come in every <laughs> single day after a funeral. Excuse me, I'll let you talk. I Your have Honor, she's only gotten the place every, cleaned every, once. Every, talk to me. Every health inspection. Your Honor, Be she responsible. doesn't clean but once a year. Your Honor, and that's I for the health for inspection just to pass. All the time. Okay? Well, hold on for a minute. If she had three funerals that day, not everybody is dissatisfied with her place, right? I understand, Your Honor. It Here. can't be that dirty. So anyway, Please. I went and read comments and reviews about the funeral home, and this I is, do have this a witness. Is after you were injured? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and you brought a witness with you. Our documents say that's Miss Ellen Harris. Yes, Your Honor. Miss Harris, would you stand at the podium? Now, Miss Gray found you online, so you've had a funeral at Miss Ortiz's funeral parlor. Yes, my mother's. What was your experience like? My experience was not good. My mother was OCD. She was always concerned about cleanliness. The day we had a funeral at the place, there was a bug in my mother's casket. From that exterminator, right, that comes every three weeks, please. Mr. Ortiz, that's bad stuff, isn't it? Well. Bugs in a casket? It was terrible. Your Honor, please. I have an yeah. exterminator come all the time. Okay, so yeah. she's, she's got an exterminator that comes, but you had bugs in your mom's casket. Yes, I had a bug in my mom's casket. And I saw rat droppings. Rat droppings? No, Your Honor. Did, did you, did anybody tell you there were rat droppings? I did. Now she that's a big deal. Rat droppings, and when I went to look, there were none. Well, it couldn't have been M&M's. What was there? Nothing, Your Honor, nothing. No rat droppings. There has never been rat droppings in my funeral home, nor have there been bugs in my funeral home, and I pass every single health department check. Ms. Harris, after you uh, told Ms. Ortiz about the rat droppings, did you have any other contact with her? No, after I told her about it, I was just quite upset because I know my mother would have rolled in her grave if she knew that I held her service in this filthy environment. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You may take your seat. Thank, Thank you. you. You said earlier that you called an exterminator for bugs. Yes, Your Honor, right? I have a regular exterminator that comes all the time. Her I would imagine that exterminator Ortiz, knows about rat droppings. I've never seen rat droppings, Your Honor. Never, ever. Folks, I think I've heard enough. I'm ready to render my decision. <laughs> In every personal injury case, the plaintiff has to prove three things. You, Miss Gray, have to prove that Miss Ortiz was wrong and that her wrong caused your injuries. Here, you've put up a case to show that you go in to do your makeup and make this uh, person look good for their family and loved ones, and you're trying to be a perfectionist, and you go below the top half of that casket and pull what you thought was a string, and it happens to be a rat that bit you, exposed you to terrible disease, and uh, left you with your hand disfigured when you tried to close the casket. Ms. Ortiz, you've never seen a rat in your place, seen rat droppings, you had an exterminator come for bugs, and despite that alley, you tried to keep your place clean. You say that had she never gone below the belt, this never would have happened. So she's responsible for her own injuries, right? Well, here, the law requires me to look at the evidence, and the evidence in this case must be balanced against what the law requires. The law requires a business owner to take reasonable measures to keep their business safe for customers and other people. If you have noticed that there is a potential hazard, then you must act responsibly as a business owner and take precautions to lessen or eliminate that hazard. Here, Ms. Ortiz, Ms. Harris reported that there were rat droppings, and it appeared to me that you did not take that seriously. The, the alleyway alone with garbage in it is not enough to hold you responsible. 
droppings are. The droppings are what required that you get somebody in there to look at that place and make sure that there are no rodents or any pestilence around. You didn't do that. And in that regard, I'm going to find in your favor, Miss Gray, and award you $46,000 for medical bills, $7,200 for lost wages, $100,000 for pain and suffering, for a total award of $153,200 in favor of the plaintiff. That's my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. <laughs> Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Gary Martin Hayes has to say. Just when you think you've seen it all, the plaintiff won in this claim because she was able to provide testimony from an unbiased witness who had no financial interest in the claim. And she testified that the funeral home was nasty and dirty. She showed that the funeral parlor allowed the rat infestation by not doing enough to keep the property clean. Ms. Ortiz's failure to keep the premises safe was her ultimate demise. No. Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Fisher versus Moretti. Ms. Fisher, it's my understanding that you filed this lawsuit for injuries that you received while cleaning at the Moretti's restaurant and that you sustained an injury to your hand. You are asking this court to award you $50,000 for past medical expenses, $20,000 for past lost wages, $10,000 for future lost wages, and $420,000 for pain and suffering for a total of half a million dollars. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. And Mr. and Mrs. Moretti, your position based on your court papers is that she was cleaning and this is kind of her fault. Yes, Your Honor. That you all didn't do anything wrong. Is that Absolutely right? Absolutely her fault, yes. Okay, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Ms. Fisher, tell me what led you to take on this cleaning job. Well, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. Please do. Okay, I am the proud mom of a 12-year-old daughter who has special needs. She has cerebral palsy and she's wheelchair bound. So you have two jobs. I do. So I cleaned for the Moretti's for the past two years. And I loved it, a beautiful place. How long have you been cleaning restaurants and people's homes, things like that? Probably 15 years. So this is what you do? This is what I love. So when you finish work cleaning, you go home and care for your baby. I do. Your second job begins. I do. Tell me about your restaurant. Ms. Fisher, you, you got your hand slashed with a sword, right? Yes, Your Honor. How, how does yes. a sword end up in your restaurant? A, a restaurant is called King Arthur's. It's, uh, it's a medieval restaurant. People patronize you pretty well? We have authentic pieces that people travel from around the southeast to see. So okay. most well, days you all get a pretty good crowd. We do. Yes, we get we a do. pretty we good crowd. We love to make everybody happy, and they come there to be happy. And folks come to your place to see the memorabilia. They do, and the food's good, too. Okay. We like to think what so. kind of food you got there, Ms. Moretti? Well, we have... Uh, Certainly tur turkey legs. Turkey legs, that's yeah. a given. Right. Gotta have Plan. turkey legs. Um, Delicious. And we, we, they, have, they we have entertainment within our restaurant. Yeah, what kind of entertainment? We have jugglers, we have jesters, if you'd like players. to joke around. Oh, like, really like a yeah, Renaissance costume. kind of deal. Like a costume. pie piper. It's fun. It's yeah. as, as if you were stepping back into time. Exactly. Miss Fisher, what kind of things are you cleaning when you're there? I'm cleaning a lot of... Um, it's memorabilia. But a lot of it is not real. It, and, it, and the memorabilia includes what, Ms. Some Moretti? authentic pieces. What is weapons. It? There are real pieces You there. said weapons, this like sword. pistols and stuff no, like no, that? Pre, no, no, no. This the is before. sword that she claims that um, she got injured with. It's a 12th century battle sword that was mounted in a way. We, we don't understand what happened. I, we but don't we understand have plenty, how she We have got plenty of replicas and plenty of actual pieces from the medieval times. So, Ms. Fisher, tell me how you got injured. They told me to clean the dining room wall. So, and what's um, on the dining room wall? All kinds of memorabilia. Right. So floor to ceiling stuff? stuff? A yeah. lot of things, yes. Okay. All over the place. So, I mean, obviously I'm short, so... And I'm bald. I, <laughs> <laughs> so I needed, I needed to do this, so I grabbed a chair, I climbed on the chair, and I started to dust, and, and I like to do a good job. I mean, it's a beautiful place. I want things to shine. So I went to get the dust off, and my dust got caught on the piece of artwork. Okay. So when it did that, I went to pull it away, and, and the sword came falling down 
and it slashed my hand. It sliced the palm of my hand, Your Honor. That's my dominant hand. That's my livelihood. That's everything. What were you thinking and, when this sword slashed Oh, my gosh, hand? it was horrific. Blood started squirting out everywhere, all over the place. Oh, my gosh, it was horrible. I fainted. I wake up in the hospital. And, oh, my God, Your Honor, I've been out of work for four months thus far. This is, this is horrific. What do you all remember from the incident? How did you first know that it happened? A really loud mm. crash from the dining area. Okay. Really loud. enough to make us both just... Yeah, and we, 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 we so ran... So you all get a beeline to yeah, the, we did to the beeline. site of the crash. It, it was terrible, Your Honor. What do you see? <sighs> this fish She's is... She's sprawled on the floor. Not moving, covered in not blood. Not moving. I grabbed the tablecloth and put pressure on and the I wound. And I immediately called 911. I was freaking. Okay, was that's freaking. responsible. Yeah, we didn't know what to do. We, we were just terrified. Miss Fisher. Yes, Your Honor. What were you thinking when you're lying down there on the floor? Well, I fainted. So, and, but I mean, before that, I mean, my, you know, my daughter, I'm, I'm all she has. So, Mr. and Mrs. Moretti, you see these injuries are severe. Why wouldn't this be your fault? It, it happened at your place, your sword. Your... We don't expect anyone to stand on a chair. We, that's, we that's, have, never, that's never, that's never even indicated anybody to do such a Getting task. on a chair. But we, she was trying to do a good job for y'all and get up as high as well, she could. Well, we put the sword has, out of arm's the, reach on purpose. We didn't think someone would try to get to on a chair. But to stand on a chair, chair to clean, that's not... We took nobody, great precautions here. She's very irresponsible. Mr. Moretti, how high up was the sword? The sword is at least 10 feet. We have 15-foot ceilings lined with memorabilia, some, some Safely authentic, secure. some now, replicas. Fisher, the sword's up 10 feet. You get on a chair. Was that wow. a good idea? Well, Your Honor, they're my bosses. Wow. They asked me to clean that wall. And Why not I, ask for a ladder, though? Chair. Because that, they didn't provide one for me. Was it, was I, it required <laughs> that you go up that high? Well, they told me to clean the back wall, and, and everything on there is high. Did y'all tell Miss Fisher that she needed to get up that high? Well, her job duties are to clean, but not to stand in a chair to do yeah. so. We it's went short. out of our way to make sure nothing like this would happen. And that it, sword was beyond reach. Her safety is out of arm's first. reach. You can't grab it. I don't. You Why know, would we, she even think to grab the sword so and Fisher, not think did about you her grab hand? The sword? Your, Your Honor. If the sword is a dangerous weapon, I mean, it came it's falling down and But feet. did you grab it? I, I did go to grab the sword. Why? Well, Why? Why did I didn't know it was... I thought it was fake. How's she to know that this sword is real? Well, there's a plaque. It well, states the battle. It's uh, from the 12th century. It was used... Now, you, your husband back. just said it's up high, though. How's she gonna see that well, plaque? She's been here two years. Level. Did you see the plaque? I did see the plaque, but not... Replicas have plaques. It, it, so you saw no, the plaque? I, but I've I, never... What paid, does the plaque I mean, say, Ms. Sword. Moretti? It just authenticates it, the sword. Right. It says this is, in fact, an authentic 12th century battle sword. I don't see anything on there about authentic or this is a real sword or you're gonna get your hand sliced if you get near it. But no. she's been there so long she knows. Miss Fisher, when you saw this plaque, what did you think it was talking about? It's just something special, a replica of something Very special. Very special. It's a but I, I don't collection. know. That, that doesn't tell me anything have, other than that. It singles it out. It, it, it indicates that we it's the most special thing in our yeah, restaurant, I, which is like a museum. You don't go around grabbing blades on anything in a museum, whether it's real or not. So, Ms. Fisher, you are asking this court to give you an award for $50,000 in medical expenses, right? That is correct. Describe uh, what you recall of your medical treatment. In the, in the palm of my hand, the tendons were so damaged, they had to be repaired. My fingers are like this, which I obviously can't show you. And you know what, Your Honor? I have nightmares. I have nightmares. This has been really detrimental and traumatic to me. And that's why you're asking this court to give you $420,000 for pain and suffering. Yes, Your Honor. I see in the court documents, there's an explanation of your injury. You talked about the laceration and repair of your hand. Mm hmm Let's look at it. Now, based on this, this uh, diagram, is that what your hand looked like? Yes, Your Honor. Before they repaired it? Yes. So when the sword came down and sliced your hand, it actually sliced the tendons inside your hand. Correct, Your that, Honor. That you use to control your finger. Correct. Okay. This diagram shows your hand repaired. Is that how your hand was repaired? Yes, Your Honor. And they had to stitch your tendons and then put sutures on the outside of your skin. Correct. That, that's what's under that brace. Yes, Your Honor. And you need that hand I need to take that care hand. of her. Yes, yes. Do you have I'm... to move her or do anything of that sort <laughs> of when you're course. caring for your daughter? Absolutely, Your Honor. She's in a wheelchair. So after you get the injury, then you still have to work, right? I can't work the way I need to to make ends meet to provide, for, again, for myself, but mostly my daughter. Can you use that hand? No. 
So no. you now have become a left-handed person. Yeah, I mean, I have three fingers that will never have full range of motion again. If you had to do this again, Mr. and Mrs. Moretti, would you tell your cleaner, look, uh, we got some real objects that on the wall. That is my witness. If I had to do it again, I would say, don't catch swords. I would throw no, don't catch hand. swords. I guess we need to redo our policy and procedure because it's just, um, I guess, maybe we need to. Yeah, I, um. You know, it, it, it seems to me that you all are not taking this as seriously it as you should. It is very serious. This is a very serious injury to a single mom. Not only is her but work she affected. It. Listen we... to me, Miss Moretti. Yes, sir. Not only is she affected by doing a cleaner's job, but the more important job, the most important job in the world, being a mom, yep. has been hindered. Yep. Don't y'all see that? And yeah. our most this important is very job serious is today, the folks. The safety of our employees I and our customers. About I understand you've got a business to run. However, and you've got some folks who are hurt and a really special mom that's hurt. But I just want you to take that seriously. Well, right, then, regardless of what you think we about have, the outcome of the case. We have a lot of empathy for this. We truly do. You all keep talking. Ms. Moretti, you keep talking to me while I'm talking to you. I'm trying to make sure you all understand that we're not here over a paper cut. She might as well be missing that hand because she cannot help her baby. But Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor, but yes. the severity of the injury shouldn't determine responsibility. Well, I appreciate your analysis, but, but that the does not money. interest me. For that amount of money, though, that would shut us down. We, our employees would be out of work. Ms. Moretti, I, I certainly understand that this has had an impact on everybody. I want you to show some heart. I will let you know whether you're legally responsible, but any human looking at Ms. Fisher's flight should, has to see we that do? this... You're talking again with me. Well, you're talking well, again with me. Listen, Your Honor, I, I, I'm going to have order in this court or you will go to jail. Do you understand that? I could lose my business, Your Honor. You could lose your liberty and the sheriff will put you in jail if you speak up again. Calm down. Ms. Fisher. Yes, Your Honor. Tell me how this has affected you. This has affected my whole life. Again, it's my livelihood. How's your little girl reacted to it? Well, she's kind of scared. I can't take care of her properly. Of course, that scares her. Now, Ms. Fisher, I, I understand that this has had a very, very serious impact on you both physically. It's had an impact on you financially. And clearly, with the tears in your eyes, I can see it's had an impact on you emotionally. But my job is tough today because I've got to decide whether the Moretti's are legally responsible for your injuries. You see that? I do, Your Honor. A, a fair yes. amount, yes, but $500,000... You said a gone. fair amount? Well, um, whatever you determine... Are you uh, negotiating numbers? No, no, sir, I'm sorry. No. No. Let me I'm do not. my job. I apologize, Your Honor, I'm sorry. Ms. Fisher, I see you've brought a witness. I have, Your Honor. And, uh, sir, if you'll step up to the podium, for the record, what is your name? My name is Jeffrey Davis, sir. And, Mr. Davis, tell the court... Uh, what your role is in this whole case. Yes, I work at the restaurant as an entertainer. I rove for entertaining. I go to different tables, and I entertain kids, and you should see the smile on their faces when I'm, when I'm performing for them. They so just what do you do it. as an entertainer? There's a lot to that one. Well, uh, actually, I brought some props with me. Can I demonstrate? Oh, please, I need some entertainment. Okay, okay. Here we go, here we go. So this is what I do. These are my uh, juggling clubs. And you know, one day, actually, I was juggling at a table, just like this, and these kids, they were saying, juggle higher, higher, and higher, which I did. And I tossed one up, and you know what? What happened? I broke a plate. Jeff, you know... And those are... Irre plate. And they're irreplaceable. They docked my... Order in this court. They docked my You may my continue, pay. sir. They docked my pay. And I remember Dr. a story... Ms. Moretti, you will be sitting beside your husband in the jail cell. Please follow my instructions. Yeah. Sir, you may continue. Yes, uh, uh, they docked my pay, and it's the same thing. You told me a story one time of a shield. You bumped off the shelf. They don't mount anything safe up there at all. Do you understand why Miss Fisher grabbed the sword? Everything looks fake in there. Mr. and Mrs. Moretti, was the plate fake? No, no the plate was, a... was So the plate real. was real. Right, and it's irreplaceable. Uh, there's, it, there's no Even other if we're compensated like the for these, they can't be replaced. Mr. Davis, thank you. You may be seated. So, Miss Fisher, what's the future look like for you? I see that you, you are suing the Moretti's for pain and suffering of $420,000. Correct, Tell me about the pain and suffering that you're referring to. Oh, my gosh. The pain is excruciating, Your Honor. And, and because of my situation, not that I'm a fan of medication, yes, I can't take anything for the pain. 
because I have to take care of my daughter. Yes, ma'am. So there's no relief there. The pain is horrible. Well, your, your daughter is of utmost importance. Oh, my gosh, yes. And I, I, I would imagine some days you've got to swallow the pain and do what you need to do as a mama. Yes, I do. That's and what I mamas have been it. doing a long time. But I try to hide it from her. We appreciate you and all the other moms that have made us survive. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah. Appreciate you, Mom. Folks, I think I've heard everything I need to hear. I'm ready to make a decision. Folks, in every personal injury case, there are three elements that the plaintiff must prove. You, Ms. Fisher. You have to prove that the Morettis were wrong and that their wrong caused your very, very severe injuries. Here, the law requires me to consider the conduct of everyone. Here, Ms. Fisher, you used a chair to get up there to try to do a good job, and you caught this sword. Mr. and Mrs. Moretti, you had a real sword on the wall that didn't really have a proper warning. That plaque didn't do much for me. But it was Is that real? I'm talking now, and here we are again. You all did not warn her appropriately so that she would know not to catch that sword. It is fair to assume that that sword is not real. Ms. Fisher, in this case, you've told me about your life and your daughter and your job. Those are very compelling things, and I'm so glad there are mothers like you. However, that's not the end of the facts. Here, you caught a real sword, and you bear fault for your own injuries. The law requires me to find you 50% negligent. And as much as it pains me, I've got to find against you and in favor of the Morettis because you are equally at fault and the law says the tie goes to the defendant. So I find in favor of the Morettis and against the plaintiff. That is my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Terry Crouppen has to say. Here the plaintiff had a serious injury, but lost because she didn't prove the defendants were negligent or the cause of her injury. If the sword had fallen because it was not properly mounted or secured, then she might have had a better claim. But in her case, she was the one who knocked the sword off the wall, and when she tried to grab it, she caused her own injury.